So let's look at using VBA programming language to create a program. The basics, we're starting with our input statements where we know we have to get data from the user. But before that, we actually need to look at storage because in order to store that data that is input, you need a variable. So any program that you do, you need to think about your variables, your inputs, and we're also going to be looking at output today. Now in VBA, we're in Microsoft Excel, developer tab. I'm going to put on design mode, insert, click on the arrow, active X controls. The first one is the command button. Drag and drop. And this is what allows me to create my program. Now I want to change the look of the command button a bit. So I'm going to go to properties. First, I have to change the name of the button. So that's like my variable name for the button. So example button, right? Um, caption is what you want displayed on it, on the button. Click here should suffice. X and there we go. Now, if I want to write the program, double click, and now we're in the VBA program. So in pseudocode, we usually have algorithm with the name of the algorithm. Here, they have used the button name as the name of the algorithm, underscore click, which means you have to click on the button in order to activate the use of the VBA program. Now we want to input and we need variables to do that. In order to declare your variables, like we declare variables in pseudocode, we usually write store and we have our constants or variables. In this case, it's called dim. Let me finish this um let me finish this comment right when I put a apostrophe or a single quote in front of words I'm leaving a comment or program documentation which is like a note for the programmer so dim and I have to make up um, a variable name now so let's say age age one maybe as and in variables for VBA, you have to come up with a data type. So the different data types are integer, which is allowed to store whole numbers, double, which stores decimal numbers, string, which stores words or a word, and Boolean, which stores true or false. It can store true or it can store false. We will mostly be using integer double string. So in your program, you need to think about what you want to input. Then you will know what data type category it goes into. So if I want to age, you're more likely to tell me, you know, 14, 15, whatever. You're not going to tell me 14 and a half unless you are very small. Only small children usually say that. So I'm going to go with integer. Right. Um, I may want to also input a name. So name would be string. Good. So we have two variables there. And now we can do some input. So input statements, there are two methods. There's using an input box or 
we can take a value entered in a cell of the Excel worksheet. Let's try the input box first. Now, after typing dim though, we should indent, right? Because our rule between start and stop is indent. Now, there's no obvious start here, but there is a stop as in end sub. So I'm going to indent and I'm going to try to input using an input box, right? So the first thing we do is we type the variable name because we need to know where that data is going to be stored. Equal open bracket, actually input box first before I open the bracket. Now open the bracket and it gives you a kind of um, idea of what you want. In this case, we just need a prompt. So the prompt is going to come here. So double quotes, um, I want age. So what is your age? Question mark, close it up, double quotes, bracket. Next one I want is name, variable name, equal input box, what on my prompt? Right, there we go. Every time I press enter, I don't know if you notice that it kind of fixes the input box and things like that. This is really what you should know a variable should follow these rules, right? No spaces, capital letter for each word. Okay, um, let's X this, go to our spreadsheet and see how that works. So I need to take design mode off and now I can run my program. Click here. What is your age? Okay, so it seems to be working. Let's go back into design mode. Um, the other method, so we just tried input boxes or input method. Now we could also try taking a value from a cell in Excel worksheet. Now, if you're doing this, you need to kind of design your um, Excel worksheet so it looks like a user interface, something for the user that is user-friendly, easy to use and to figure out. So I'm going to put a prompt here. Or actually, I want to put more of a, a label in a way. Enter age here, enter name here. Good, so that's a clear instruction as to what I want the person to do. What's not clear though is where to enter it. So I can put a box, let's put a little border. All right, so that looks a little better. And of course you can format this any way you wish. Right, let's go back to our program. Oh, I need to know what cell the answer or the data is going to be typed into. So C10 and C is for age and C12 would be for name. All right, design mode, double click. Let me put in another uh, variable. So this will be age two. So I could type dim age two as integer, but since I have integer up here, I'm gonna put comma age two and comma name two. All right. Okay. Now, how do we input data from a cell? So we're going to put the variable name again, age two this time, equal to range, open bracket, double quote, C10. Remember the cell address for where the data will be typed in. Value. And the name two, equal range. I think it was C12. I mean, I could double click as it comes up as well, right? 
So was it C12? Yes, it was. So let's see what happens here. Click, ask for the age, name. Okay, all we did was was um was input and we did some storage. But I don't know if it actually inputs if anything happened. So let's go back into design mode and we need to now go to our output statements. And there are two ways. There's using a message box or to display a cell, uh, a value in a cell, the information. Let's use the message box first. Design mode, double click on the program. And let's start with message box. Did I, oh, I misspelled message. Right, message box. I need to put my label now. The age entered is Close a quote. Now, normally in pseudocode, we would type a comma. For uh, VBA, you need the ampersand, the and sign. Each one. Message box. The name entered is name one. Oh, I just realized I typed out the entire word message box. Um, they use a shortened version, which is MSG for message box. I think we're good there. Yeah, right. Let's close this now. It saves automatically. Go into our takeoff design mode. Let's click on the button. Ah, there's our message box. The age entered is 14. The name is Jane. Nice. So that works. We know input boxes work. Next thing is to display a value in the cell of the Excel worksheet. So let's check that out. Enter age here. So then I could put you entered. No, actually I want um, I want it to show up. So I need the cell address that I want the information for it to, dis to display, to output. So I'm going to go to E10 and E12. So E10 for age, E12 for the name. That's where I want the information to be output. Put on design mode. Let's go back in. That's what we're doing now. Um, what I said, E10. Okay, so range E10 dot value equal. Now here's it's different. Um, I need to identify the cell first and then say what I want it equal to. When you, were, oh, uh, when you were inputting, you would put the variable name first and then say the cell you're taking the data from. Now I'm putting data into the cell. I'm putting information. All right, uh, what do I want here? Age two. Right, that's X and let's see what happens. Take off design mode, click. Okay, so good, we know that's working. But look at this, 
A zero showed up. Why is that? Well, I didn't type any data into my cells. Let's try that. So, okay, click here. 14 for this age, Jane for here. Oh, I just realized I typed the wrong thing. I put age here. <laughs> so they're expecting an integer and I typed a word. Oops. All right, let's go again. 14, Jane. Ah, there it is. Good. Now we need to fix a few things. Um, let me run this one more time for you to see. Do you notice it has the age entered is 14 and is 14 is like really close together. No space. We need to fix that. Same by Jane. So let's go fix that. In the output, inside of the quotes, we're going to put a space. Right. Let's see if that fix. Looks much better. Look at that. Is space 14? Is space Jane? Good. Now we want to fix this a little bit too. We need some kind of label. So we need quote um, the age entered is. Close quote. Ah, I need my space. Close quote and sign. And the same for here. Okay, let's see what happens. We know that works. Ah, look at that. I now have a label next to my with my output and that looks much better right last i'm going to show you is that every time i want to do this this stays the same so let's say i wanted to enter something else here i'm still seeing 15 and joe so we really need to clear this So I'm going to create another button that could say play a button. New form, I'm going to call it new form. Right, or I could call it start again. Oops, let me click on my button, then go to properties and start again. Okay, start again, click here. Okay, now I wanna clear out the boxes 10, C10, 12, and E10, 12. Right, double click. And you'll see that this new button is in a new program above the one that we typed. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna indent. I don't have any variables or anything with this. I just wanna clear my cells, make them empty and new to for somebody else to type. So I will type range C10 dot value, no, dot clear contents. Look at here, clear contents. That's what I want. And I'm going to copy and paste this and just change the cell address. 
I think I got it all there. Let's see if it works. Take off design mode. Right, it blanks everything. So now I could type in the new one. And let's see what happens. There we go, right. And that's a basic program, VBA program, input, storage, output.